Right, now welcome to part two of uh, Intel vPro activation. So now we need to install the Intel AMT configuration server and the Intel AMT console. You can find these installation files as part of the download media that you downloaded for HP client automation or if you have a DVD just simply go to the setup core directory then the media directory and the outer band management. If we go into the outer band management and go into the AMT configuration server we can find the install files for the config server and the install files for the console. In this case we just double click on the config server. We have a number of options to follow but a uh, very simple installation. Uh, I'm currently logged on as the domain administrator in my environment however you may create a service account for this and you can find more detailed information within the same folder uh, that we just ran the executable from there is a number of documentation files uh, both from Intel and from Hewlett Packard. So we're going to wait for the Visual C++ to finish and then we click next. We need to accept the end user license agreement and in this case we're going to do a custom install and the reason we're doing a custom install is I want to be able to configure some advanced options. In my environment here I am uh, choosing my HTTP website to be a HTTP only, not HTTPS. So that is for the AMT SCS virtual directory and for the remote configuration directory as well. If you wish to secure communications between the, uh, to the website, you'll need to uh, leave those options uh, ticked. But in most uh, environments, we would leave that option unticked. We simply click next choose the installation folder and click next and then the password in my case I'm logged on as my domain administrator that is to use uh, has the credentials to run the Windows service I click next and it's going to uh, assign the correct uh, policy to that user account we click yes and then on the next screen we're with a database server logon now I don't have a pre-installed SCS database and I'm going to use a local database pointing to the SQL server that I actually have running locally on this machine. And they're going to create the database using Windows authentication. We'll connect to the Microsoft SQL server. Uh, once we've connected to the SQL server we'll have to do some more configuration. It's going to create a database called Intel AMT and it also needs to know the SQL authentication username and password. We click next. It's going to update the IIS components and away we can go and install the Intel Active Management Technology console. This will take a couple of minutes and then simply at the end of this process we install the management console to the Intel AMT website that we've just configured. Now once we have done this the next step we'll need to do is actually configure the AMT um, service, a user account and the properties that we need for our Intel vPro provisioning. So just to recap whilst uh, the installation is happening, stage one we need to install HP client automation. Stage two we install the Intel AMT provisioning server. In stage three we'll install the Intel AMT provisioning console. Now we've finished the first part of the installation, we just need to click finish and it will automatically start the AMT configuration service. That's a Windows service that you can see will automatically start on boot of the server. The second stage to this part of the configuration is to install the AMT console. Very simple, once again, run the executable and follow the on-step wizard. There's no configuration required here except um, to accept the end user license agreement. and click next 
and click next and we will install the AMT console. It's a very quick process and that is now complete. So there we have configured, uh, sorry, there we have installed the Intel AMT provision server and the console. So you can see now we have the console off the start menu and if we also go to the services on my server here you'll see we have a Windows service running now as well as a default website that points to the Intel AMT provisioning server. If you can see here AMT config it's a process is automatically started on boot and the local account that it's logging onto was the account I used during the installation which in this case was the domain administrator. So for a production environment you may wish to set up a service account to deliver that functionality. The next part of the series will be how to configure the Intel AMT uh, console and users and that will be part of the next video. So thank you very much for your time.